All right, you all are just gonna have to forgive me. I haven't done a live video like this in a year, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm feeling very awkward and I have all these screens in front of me. I'm not used to this at all anymore. So I would appreciate your grace. Um, my name is Tajmika Torak and I am the founding co-director of the Firecracker Foundation. Thank you for being here with me on this really special night. Um, I would love if you would remember to just click share with all of your loved ones and friends on social media. Um, for my friends who are blind or who have low visibility, I'm just going to share a, a verbal image description of myself. I am a black woman wearing a red spaghetti strap jumper with white flowers. I have tattoos visible on both shoulders. I'm wearing a silver septum ring and a nose piercing. My hair is in braids and they're twisted to the side with blonde highlights and I have shells in my hair. Um, behind me, you can see a purple wall uh, with a painting of our logo. Um, and there's other things on the wall, but I don't think you can see them. So um, before we get started, I do have a request, uh, some requests and some details that I want to go over with you. So if you're joining us from Instagram Live, we do not have ASL or captions available for you. You'll want to switch over to Facebook. That's where we have ASL um, and captions available for you. Tonight, we have Katie Kaur, who's providing us with ASL interpretation. Um, and again, as I said, captions are available on Facebook. Um, if at any point you have a hard time seeing the interpreter or reading the captions, please let us know in the comments. Um, the UnoDuce team is watching. James is here, and he will flag me, and we'll just take a pause for access. Not a problem at all. So before we get started, I just want to acknowledge um, that we occupy the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands of the Anishinaabe, Three Fires Confederacy of the Ojibwe, uh, Ottawa, and Potawatomi Indigenous peoples. Uh, take a moment right now to share where you are watching from. Do you know whose land you are on right now? If you don't, Ash is gonna post a link in the chat to help you identify where you are. Today is Indigenous Peoples Day, and we have to acknowledge and honor a history of resilience and reclamation. We remember and pray for the missing and murdered Indigenous women. We stand in solidarity with those who continue to grieve, those who work to protect their community, and those who fight for justice that heals. We recognize, support, and advocate for the sovereignty of Michigan's 12 federally recognized Indian nations, for the historically indigenous communities in Michigan, for indigenous individuals and communities who live here now, and for those who were forcibly removed from their homelands. We also recognize the enslaved Africans who were subjugated to forced to, uh, free labor to build white wealth, and the dehumanization and harm inflicted upon the global majority throughout our nation's history. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal of people from their homelands, and we honor and respect the many diverse indigenous people, black people, and other members of the global majority still connected to the land where we gather. This acknowledgement is important, uh, we can, but it can't recognize the fullness of the loss indigenous people, black people, and those who have been historically targeted and marginalized by white supremacy on this land. Thank you for holding these important truths with, uh, with us as we begin this evening with a moment of silence. Thank you. I also just want to thank Black Lives Matter Lansing for allowing us to use their template, uh, their land acknowledgement as a template. I think it's beautiful. And I love how it acknowledges the connection that we have between multiple communities within the global majority. So um, I also wanted to just say that the Firecracker Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization based in Lansing, Michigan, working to end child sexual abuse. If you're new here, that's who we are. And while I will not be sharing any stories with graphic details, the content of what I share tonight could be triggering for some. Uh, please take care of yourself and remember that you are loved for stepping away when you need to. Tonight's live will be available on Facebook and eventually on YouTube with ASL and captions. It's 
on Instagram. Hi, Instagram. <laughs> Uh, so if you need a moment to breathe or to take care of yourself, you can always come back and watch it later. We're not going anywhere. Um, and Lord knows I will never run out of things to say about this place. <laughs> so welcome to The Circle. As an organization that has been working to integrate restorative justice practices into our daily lives, we invite you to sit in this virtual circle with us. And we start every circle with an opening question. So here's mine for tonight. If you could offer a blessing or a wish for the Firecracker Foundation, what would it be? I'm gonna drink my tea while I, while I listen to your wishes. I already saw Robin likes my mug. <laughs> I miss being in community with you all so much. Um, this, is, this is not quite the same, but I'm so glad that we get to be here together. Um, earlier today, we were talking about our wishes and really all of our wishes related to um, authentic relationship, abundance, but not abundance in the way that we talk about wealth, abundance in the way that our relationships resource us together and how we as a community are very connected and we work together to create this whole thing. This whole thing happens because of people who um, love this work and love the children we work with. So we were, off, we were asking for more of that um, into the future. Um, we know that the current status of COVID would put those among us who are immunocompromised at risk. So we couldn't do anything to bring you all here to me. So I am coming to you in your home. I hope you're comfortable. <laughs> we have expressed our commitment to disability justice for two years. Um, before that, for sure. But in the global pandemic, we found ways to connect digitally that made the world more accessible for all of us um, in ways that are more inclusive of people with disabilities. And we won't be turning back now. Not yet. Um, we know that the risk is still there, and so we want to just be in solidarity with our um, people with disabilities and with people um, who are restricted from accessing all of us. So remember to get vaccinated, remember to wear your masks, and please stay home if you're sick. Those are the rules. Um, as my friend Mia Mingus shared, we keep us safe doesn't just apply to police abolition. It can be a rallying point for continued efforts to protect one another from COVID. Ash is gonna drop a link um, in the, I'm looking down at the chat and pointing at it as if you can see, <laughs> um, of a COVID risk assessment tool that you can use to determine where you can be um, and how you can access community in the safest way possible. So tonight I am here to boldly share who we are and what we are becoming at the Firecracker Foundation. I am also here to ask for your financial support. I don't wanna bury the lead. You know what I always say, there are some things that only money can do. If you are already prepared to make a donation, please visit our website uh, and give generously. We are hoping to secure 35 new monthly donors by the end of the year. If you are already a monthly donor, say hello in the comments and let us shower, shower you with love. If you're not, but you'd like to be one, don't let us hold you. You'll find the link in the comments. Um, you can also text give or donate to 517-684-3830. Ash will be dropping that in the chat if you didn't catch it. Um, we're also seeking corporate sponsors for our Soul Fire Gala, which will be held next April. Okay. I think we've covered all the details. So are we ready to get started on what I came here to say? Um, <laughs> I feel like there's so much suspense about reintroducing ourselves. Oh, I love that, Christy. Funding at a level that allows for generous rest for FCF's leaders and staff. Yes, that is absolutely what we're talking about tonight. It's about a culture of care. Um, and I'm gonna get into that for sure. Shoket, thank you for saying I'm in, I love you. Thanks for all the hearts. Um, it has been some time since I last spoke to you directly. Uh, and tonight I am fresh and bright coming back from the Opportunity Collaboration in Misha's Dominican Republic. 
I was honored to have been awarded a fellowship to attend. Um, and I was able to bring uh, Tara and Carolyn with me, our co-directors, um, thanks to both Women Strong and Focus for Health, some of our funders. We've been so busy preparing for this evening that we haven't even had a chance to tell you about the incredible experience we had, but we will soon, we will soon. I have a ton of photos that I wanna share and lots of stories. Some of you who are my personal friends have definitely seen me talking about it online. In the past two years, we have navigated much of what you've navigated, uh, civil unrest, complex staffing issues, a global pandemic, and other challenges while still maintaining a high level of care for the children and families we serve. It was through these experiences that we realized that we needed to radically readjust the way that we held our work. Our mission statement, honoring the bravery of children who have experienced sexual trauma by building a community invested in the healing of their whole being, it wasn't really serving us anymore. It feels weird to say that out loud and I'm getting teary-eyed because I wrote that mission statement at three in the morning. Um, I actually texted uh, this uh, interpreter over here um, who happens to be a really close friend of mine at exactly that hour with a list of things that I wanted to create with, through that mission. And so it feels weird to be standing here in 2020, almost 10 years later, we'll celebrate our 10th anniversary, July 31st, and say that something that was so important to me is no longer serving us. Like a little crab, we have outgrown our home. Uh, at this point, we, you know, at this point of this realization, we'd spent seven years learning, serving, growing, and quite honestly, I'd spent a lot of my time burning myself out for the sake of what I thought this community needed. We hit pause on our volunteers, on a lot of our forward-facing work. We recognized that we could not keep going without a mission statement or a clear sense of direction. Using an inside-out model, the co-directors led our staff and our board through a process of reimagining the Firecracker Foundation. Tonight, I am happy to announce that we are formally becoming a healing justice practice site. I'm sorry, I don't have any bells and whistles. <laughs> I feel like I need a gong or a cymbal or a confetti. <laughs> How many of you are familiar with healing justice? I'm like thirsty, hold on. I mean, we talk a lot about healing and we talk a lot about justice. And, um, you know, like, I'm not sure that when we were first talking about it that we really understood what we were saying. Um, in his book, Black Youth Rising, Sean Ginwright says that healing justice focuses on both the systemic consequences of a profession on hope, as well as how communities can heal and be restored to vibrant, healthy communities. Healing justice practitioners are acutely aware of the ways in which stress, lack of resources, violence, and prolonged exposure to trauma all present tremendous challenges in creating community and or social change. Some of the characteristics of healing, a healing justice space, this is from Hope and Healing and Urban Educa Education by Sean Ginwright, uh, is transformative organizing. Social change is the result of individual, individual and collective transformation, restorative justice, healing circles, contemplative practices. Does that sound familiar to anyone besides me? <laughs> uh, as we were exploring these ideas, we were realizing that we had already started becoming a healing justice practice site, but we were not in deep enough yet. When we started our caretaker support group, I remember saying to y'all that we cannot heal a child if we don't support the parents too. Tonight, I'm saying to you that we cannot heal anyone, not the children, not the parents, and not ourselves, if we don't work to acknowledge and address the ways that people are being hurt by the systems in place. Many of you know that I have not been well. Um, to be honest, I cried every single day this summer, at least once. When I wasn't actively crying, I was so depressed that I couldn't sleep or eat. Even now, my anxiety can be so intense that I can literally feel my bones shaking under my skin. 
To put it plainly, I have suffered some tragedies, both in my personal life and here at the Firecracker Foundation, my heart work that triggered intense symptoms in my body and my brain. After years of holding people up, my nervous system shut down and erupted all at the same time. While this was going on, we were hit with crisis after crisis. I remember saying to my loved ones, can we please catch a fucking break? And the answer was no. <laughs> Fortunately, no, we could not. While I worked to keep my commitments to the people within the organization, I kept most of what I was going through to myself, and I leaned heavily on Tara and Carolyn, my co-directors. They lovingly and graciously held me as I healed and encouraged me to let go of any work that was not urgent. So I did. I let go. I'm going to cry already. <laughs> I went to therapy. I slept when I could. I stocked my pantry with what I have named uh, depression-proof foods and focused the little energy I had on my most valuable relationships, my family. I showed up fully for our staff and board, but couldn't always be available for external work. I turned on an email auto response that promised to give you as much notice as my body gives me when I need to cancel a scheduled appointment because I was too sick to attend. I fought back feelings of inadequacy, guilt, and internalized feelings of shame about my invisible disabilities becoming exposed in ways that made me feel vulnerable. After all, hadn't I been called the strong one since I was a little girl? I am the person others come to when they need help. There are many people in this community who can attest to the fact that my porch and my kitchen are open to them if they need a place to decompress, bounce an idea off of me, or think through strategies for their own visionary work. But I was hurting and I was, I was sick. As the former executive director, I always did my best to make sure that TFF was a workplace where the needs of survivors of violence were recognized and accommodated beyond what is offered elsewhere. 2022 became the year that I desperately needed that space for myself. My therapist recommended that I try a float and a sensory deprivation tank. Uh, just in case anybody else is panicking immediately, I just want you to know that was also my first response when that was recommended. <laughs> it honestly sounded terrible. But when I tell you I was willing to try every recommendation, I scheduled my session without hesitation. And while I floated in the salt water, I had this moment where I was imagining myself planting flowers in places where I had experienced harm like in the physical places, in the buildings, in the rooms, on the walls, on the doors, um, bedazzling. I have this image of myself with gems and crystals. And then I had this epiphany. I have spent the past nine years telling survivors of all ages that they deserve healing, restoration, and justice. I realized that if what I have told other survivors is true, if, if, or excuse me, if it isn't true what I've been saying, then that makes me a liar and a fraud. And that shook me. It didn't immediately make me feel better, but it did recalibrate me towards more self-compassion and patience for what my body, heart, and spirit needed to go through in order to heal. I'm not a liar and I'm not a fraud. And so if you're a survivor who's watching this right now, I just wanna reaffirm that you do deserve healing, you do deserve restoration, and you do deserve justice. And it's okay for you to take the time you need to heal, whether it's immediately after experiencing a trauma, five years after 10, 20, whenever something arises that hurts, you deserve the time to take care of yourself and to heal. I also just want to take a moment to thank Carolyn and Tara and our entire staff team and our board for holding me down. To Subin, to Psycho, to Mia, Ignacio, and Liam, 
to my besties from El Paso, Melanie, Choquette, and Latrice, to my sisters from the Metro Detroit Restorative Justice Network, Belinda, Carrie, Barbara, and Angel, to my family near and far, to Kyle and Lydia, to my kickball team, <laughs> um, yeah. to all of you, to all of my friends, loved ones, and colleagues who honored my capacity for care, uh, with care, for everyone who carried a little extra when I couldn't. I, could, I cannot express my gratitude enough. I cannot express how much love I have for all of you. I am not completely out of the woods, um, but this is by choice. There are too many lessons from grief to run away from it. And so I am holding it closely and with love. So <laughs> over the next, uh, over the course of the next eight months leading into our 10 year anniversary, if you can even imagine 10 years, I, I, I don't even know what to do with that number. We will start reintroducing you to the Firecracker Foundation through our collective storytelling. We are not who we were. We, uh, I was just on a plane with Tara and I looked over her at her and I was like, this is like a whole different organization that we've created. This is not the same thing that we used to be doing. It's incredible, it's exhilarating. And I am so excited to share all of the details. First of all, please put November, November 10th on the calendar. We'll be holding a killer reveal party for those of you who enjoy uh, that TV show only murders in the building. Now you may be wondering, <laughs> will we be revealing a killer or will it be a killer reveal party? It's obviously the latter. We don't do violence here. We'll be revealing our new mission statement, vision and updated values. And if you've been listening over the past year, I guarantee you've heard our new mission statement because it shows up everywhere in everything that we do. So sign up, you can sign up now for our low volume newsletter. That's a new thing too. We're going low volume new newsletter. So we won't be emailing you all the time. We want you to rest too. We don't want you to have to be checking out your email to hear from us all the time. Like and follow us on Facebook to keep up with any of the, the latest, the latest and the greatest. You'll hear from our staff about who they are now and how they'll be holding their work in the future. None of us are the same. I think we're all arriving to the work in a different way. You'll hear from our newly broken board. Don't worry, it's not a bad thing. We just decided that hierarchical patriarchal leadership structures modeled after an imperialist colonizing government probably isn't a good fit for a healing justice practice site. <laughs> so we decided that it was time to break the board. We don't know what we're gonna call it yet, but we are in process with that. And if you're a foreign, if you happen to be a former or current member of the board, please say hello in the comments. Hi guys. <laughs> we'll be sharing with you our just policies, our yearly rhythm, and the new generational impact map of how TFF services intervene on intergenerational trauma and violence in ways that are healing your community, both backwards and forwards. The elders, the young adults, the youth, and even our littlest babies that are born um, under the care of our doulas. So here is what I share um, as my ask, as your friendly neighborhood conjurer of resources. Every year about this time, I start to freak out about whether we'll raise the money we need to continue our work next year. This year is a little bit different. I have not been able to perform the caliber of fundraising that I have in years past. And every day I worry that my healing will be the reason we cannot fully function next year. And that scares me. However, the truth is this work has never meant, was never meant to rest on my shoulders alone. That was never the intention. It's yours. This is the healing community you built. 
we serve at the pleasure of this community. In addition to all of the changes we've made, we have decided that in order for the Firecracker Foundation to be sustainable, we are changing our funding model. I'm really excited about this because, you know, I'm the, I'm, I'm the one who uh, inspires riots of generosity around here. <laughs> so we're looking to change it so that we are 40% community funded, 40% grant funded, and we're now going to be um, including program income in our funding model. Uh, this means that that 20% of program income will include a sliding scale for services. Um, we're hiring a medical biller to charge insurance when possible, when it's possible and safe to do so. And we're offering consultations and trainings that are going to be fee-based. We have developed a wealth of knowledge and we know that you come here to learn and we are seeking reciprocity. We're seeking your support so that we can actually do the work that we need to do um, and do the culture shifting work that we need to do while also being financially sustainable. We're still applying for grants, but we are decreasing our reliance on them. And we're focusing on unrestricted capacity building multi-year funders who are trust based, meaning they believe in our skills and they know that we are the experts in the work that we do. And then 40% funded by you, individual donors, monthly donors, hopefully 35 new ones this year. We're already above 100. I mean, I would love to have like every year get closer to 200. Um, and corporate gifts and sponsorships for Soul Fire. Community-based, community-led, and community-funded. Let me explain why. One of the reasons we at the Firecracker Foundation can relentlessly and fearlessly speak truth to power is that our financial support is not tied to the types of funding that would push us away from our mission or our values. Our organizational costs have increased by 15% over the past year because of cost of living increases for staff, inflation increases, and because we pay people equitably. We are asking the community to increase their funding support by 12%, which means that we would increase from $112,000 to $125,000 a year. So let me also say that we are already community funded. Like, the love that you feel for us is already felt like and witnessed. And we saw it in the summer of 2020 and Freedom Summer. You all gave so much money um, in June and July of that year. Um, and I just wanna honor the name of George, George Floyd because a lot of the transition that we have made here was through the reckoning with the violence that he experienced. But we need it to be consistent. We need folks to continue to remember that Black-led community-based organizations are underfunded, under-resourced, and pushed out of spaces that claim to work for social justice. Did you know that 80% of nonprofit funding comes from government grants? We want to align more deeply with organizations that have a clear stance around police violence, which includes sexual and domestic violence. We can't do that with funding that requires a relationship with the same local law enforcement entities that viciously assaulted a teen survivor in 2019 or murdered Anthony Hulon in the jail in 2021 or of any of the countless incidents of injustice and violence and harm that policing enacts on our community. We know who they are. And more importantly, we know who we are. If our funding is unshakable, so are we. So tonight we are asking you to continue to shield us within a system not designed for us to exist. We are seeking 25 new monthly donors who are willing to give over $10 per month and 10 who can give over $84 a month this year. We're also hoping that some of you will pledge to sponsor Soulfire. And I wanna just give a shout out to Ben Rathbun who, um, is already one of our signature sponsors this year, who actually encouraged me to raise the cost of the sponsorship. And when I did, and I came back to him asking him for more, he was like, absolutely. 
um, because he was the one who set the challenge. He knows how to walk the talk. So I'm, I, that's all I wanted to share with you this evening. Um, I just, in closing, I just wanna say that we have witnessed one another here at the Firecracker Foundation and in our homes show up despite huge upheavals in our lives. We have navigated illnesses, deaths, professional challenges, and the state of our local state and federal government. I am so grateful for all of the ways that you have showed up in spite of the conditions and in service of this critical work that we do here. So I, I know and I have faith that all of this has happened so that I could come to you with this request, that it was already in the stars that we would find ourselves in a position to completely transform ourselves internally so that we can continue to offer transformation to this community through the children and families that we serve. So with that, I am going to offer a closing question. And it's a question that we have been sitting with in circle, I mean, maybe for two years. Uh, it's a question that Angela Waters Austin and I discussed um, when we were thinking about a racial equity accountability process. And the question is, what is justice that heals? So I look forward to reading your responses. I look forward to celebrating with you all of the ways um, that we get to reintroduce ourselves to you. And again, I would remind you to please put November 10th on the calendar. We'll be sending out invitations um, and making sure that you all know we have some fun stuff lined up for that, including at least one performance. Um, and thank you for just showing up, it, given that we're not doing in-person things right now. Um, we appreciate that. So that's all I have to say about that tonight. I'm going to, um, are there any questions? I don't know. I just wanted to see if I'm missing any while I was talking so much. Oh, I'm just seeing a lot of love. Thank you all for so much love. Thank you, thank you. And I really, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to what is coming. As our teens have said in the past, the future is lit. So, and as suspected, I was right all along. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you for being here. <laughs>